Chapter 27. Deuteronomy 27, 1-10. The people are to write the law upon stones. 2. It shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan days often put for time, and it was not till some days after the passage that the following instructions were acted upon. Thou shalt set thee up great stones, and place to them with place to these stones were to be taken in their natural state, unhewn, and unpolished the occasion on which they were used not admitting of long or elaborate preparation, and they were to be daubed over with paint or whitewash, to render them more conspicuous. Stones and even rocks are seen in Egypt and the peninsula of Sinai, containing inscriptions made three thousand years ago, in paint or plaster. By some similar method those stones may have been inscribed, and it is most probable that Moses learned the art from the Egyptians. 3. Thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law, it might be, as some think, the Decalogue, but a greater probability is that it was the blessings and curses, which comprised in fact an epitome of the law, Joshua 8, 34. 5 to 10. The shalt thou build an altar. Of whole stones, the stones were to be in their natural state, as if a chisel would communicate pollution to them. The stony pile was to be Song of Solomon large as to contain all the conditions of the covenant. Song of Solomon elevated as to be visible to the whole congregation of Israel, and the religious ceremonial performed on the occasion was to consist, first, of the elementary worship needed for sinful men, and secondly, of the peace offerings, or lively, social feasts, that were suited to the happy people whose God was the Lord. There were thus, the law which condemned, and the typical expiation the two great principles of revealed religion. Deuteronomy 27, 11 to 13. The tribes divided on Jerizim and Abel. 11 to 13. These shall stand upon Mount Jerizim to bless the people. These shall stand upon Mount Abel to curse those long, rocky ridges lay in the province of Samaria, and the peaks referred to were Nishishim, Nablus, rising in steep precipices to the height of about 800 feet and separated by a green, well watered valley of about 500 yards wide. The people of Israel were here divided into two parts. On Mount Gerizim, now Jebel Eter, were stationed the descendants of Rachel and Leah, the two principal wives of Jacob, and to them was assigned the most pleasant and honorable office of pronouncing the benedictions, while on the twin hill of Ebal, now Imad el Din, were placed the posterity of the two secondary wives, Zilpa and Bilha with those of Reuben, who had lost the primogeniture, and Zebulun, Leah's youngest son, to them was committed the necessary but painful duty of pronouncing the maledictions, see on Judges 9, 7. The ceremony might have taken place on the lower spurs of the mountains, where they approach more closely to each other, and the course observed was as follows, amid the silent expectations of the solemn assembly. The priests standing round the ark in the valley below, said aloud, looking to Jerizim, Blessed is the man that maketh not any graven image, when the people ranged on that hill responded in full simultaneous shouts of Amen, then turning round to Abel, they cried, Cursed is the man that maketh any graven image, to which those that covered the ridge answered, Amen. The same course at every pause was followed with all the blessings and curses, see on Joshua 8. 33, 34. These curses attendant on disobedience to the divine will, which had been revealed as a law from heaven, be it observed, are given in the form of a declaration, not a wish, as the words should be rendered, cursed is he, and not, cursed be he, 